Welcome to UBP's 2020 Outlook podcast with Marco Pabst, CIO of UBP in London. Today, Marco will be giving us some insights regarding the impact of Brexit on sterling and domestic equities. Hello, Marco. Hello. Um, after years of political crisis, do you think the UK has finally found its way out of the Brexit chaos? That's a very good question. Um, as a result of the Brexit referendum in the summer of 2016 and 17, and as well as the ongoing struggles to reach a withdrawal agreement, we now have a dysfunctional hung parliament in the UK where the Conservatives lost the majority of seats. The general election on the 12th of December will hopefully change that situation and reconstitute the House of Commons, whereby one party will have a clear majority. In that sense, the election is likely to make the parliamentary process a bit easier going forward, provided we don't end up again with a hung parliament. Unfortunately, the election is only a first step, although a very important one, out of the Brexit chaos. Provided the Conservatives reach a majority in the elections, the UK will then leave the EU at the end of January 2020, followed by an 11-month transition period. Only Labour government, only Labour victory, sorry, uh, or Jeremy Corbyn as PM, supported by, say, the uh, SNP or the Lib Dems, would change that picture dramatically and lead to continued chaos. Fortunately, the likelihood of such a scenario is low at this point. And do you think a general election is likely to stabilize the current political environment? Uh, within the 11 months transition period, the UK has to negotiate what uh, currently can only be a quick and dirty trade deal, uh, where the UK will have to make many concessions uh, to get this done before the end of 2020. I'm somewhat skeptical that this can be achieved, at least within the time frame considered. I can only hope that the elections will deliver a clear mandate for Parliament so it can focus on resources uh, that, uh, on the trade agreement, even if the time frame might be over-ambitious at, at the moment. If that can be achieved, I believe Brexit uh, will slowly slip away from uh, being front-page news every day and people and businesses will simply uh, quickly move uh, and focus on uh, life after Brexit. As I said, only, the only threat to this outcome uh, that I can see at this point is uh, an election result that puts Jeremy Corbyn in the seat of the Prime Minister. The Brexit debate would pale in comparison to the consequences of such an outcome that would, much, uh, would have much graver uh, implications for the UK. So, considering the somewhat uncertain outlook, can you let us know how the election outcome will impact certain asset classes? Starting with the hopefully unlikely scenario of Corbyn uh, uh, being the Prime Minister, the immediate impact on financial markets would simply be very bad. Considering Labour's aggressive spending plans um, that can only be funded by a substantial increase in debt, yields are expected to rise over the medium term, which would be negative for bond markets. In an initial reaction, the sterling is likely to drop substantially and could easily fall 5 to 10 points the day after the election. As for stock markets, the reaction would be somewhat mixed in the sense that multinational large caps would benefit from a weaker pound and are also less uh, related to the local economy. Small and mid caps would likely suffer initially from selling pressure, especially also when foreign investors start retreating from the UK and also because a clean Brexit has been baked into UK domestic names uh, at the moment. Obviously, assets that might be exposed to nationalization plans under labor would also be badly impacted. This would include utilities, railways, uh, and uh, some telecom companies. At the moment, markets are essentially assuming a conservative victory and by extension, a positive outcome on Brexit. And could you tell investors what are the asset classes in the UK which will stand out as potential winners in a positive Brexit scenario? Sure. Uh, this scenario broadly implies a conservative government where spending will not increase by much. However, it might increase consumer confidence simply because of the risks uh, of a Labour government uh, receding. Effectively, I believe we would see a continuation of prevailing trends and markets. Um, this is that we would see further strengths in sterling, possibly reaching and surpassing 140 against the dollar, getting closer to its fair value of around 145 to 150. To us, this is the cleanest vehicle, if you like, to play a positive Brexit and election outcome. Should the sterling strengthen further, this would see large cap performance in local currency terms somewhat curtailed due to the currency effect. In general, local stock markets tend to perform well when the home currency weakens and it would fare worse if the currency strengthens. Domestic equities would likely continue to perform well 
and outperform large caps, at least in the medium term. GDP in general could easily reaccelerate somewhat uh, from its current pace of around 1%, which is in line with growth in the Eurozone, but only at half the level of the US. And which industries will be favored by the scenario of a strengthening currency and fiscal stimulus targeted at middle to lower income segments of the population? Um, when we look at the manifestos of Labour and the Conservatives, they look extremely different in terms of their increase in day-to-day -day spending of the government. Um, Labour increases spending by over 80 billion pounds a year, while the Conservatives, plan, uh, Conservatives plans um, include additional spending of only 3 billion per year. The manifesto presented by the Labour Party is extremely aggressive in terms of public spending and would bring the government's share of the economy back to levels last seen in the mid-1970s. Most of this spending is targeted at additional funds for healthcare, the pension system and education, with most of this being funded by a combination of higher taxes and more debt. Labour plans to increase government debt by 400 billion from currently 1.8 trillion. As such, Labour is targeting higher earners and uh, corporations to raise more taxes to be spent on public services and pensions without explicitly stimulating lower income families. On the other side, the Conservatives will, uh, will somewhat increase public spending and promise not to increase taxes. So both manifestos address some underfunded areas with additional public spending and the stimulus would therefore be more indirect. Overall, we believe the home building sector and related industries should continue to fare well simply because of the structural shortages in housing and both parties' willingness to change that. Under a conservative government, we would also expect banks to continue to do well and sectors that are currently trading at a labor discount to recover. This would include utilities, for instance, that are currently trading at a meaningful discount to European peers. The retail sector could also potentially see a recovery if and when the consumer confidence returns. Fundamentally, the UK is not in such a bad shape at the moment. Interest rates are very low and likely to decline further. Real wages are currently rising by around 2% and unemployment is at 40 year lows. So once the politi political uncertainty subsides, uh, the consumer could surprise on the upside next year. Home builders appear to be supported by several structural long-term drivers in the UK. How cheap or expensive is this sector at the moment? Overall, we expect the, the uh, home building sector and the latest industries to continue to perform well simply because of the structural shortages in housing and both parties' willingness to address this problem. Currently, supply of net additional dwellings in the UK is approximately 100,000 units below the government target of around 300,000 per annum. Labour is planning to add 1 million council homes over 10 years uh, just to give you some perspective on the scale of the problem in the UK. What is interesting about the home builder sector is that most companies in the space not only look cheap from a valuation perspective, but have also dramatically transformed their balance sheets over the years. Just to give you an idea about how radical companies have changed since their near-death experience during the financial crisis, indebtedness was reduced by almost 80% over the last 10 years, Cash on balance sheets has more than tripled over the same period and returns on equity are close to 20% at the moment. Earnings growth over the last three years was 12.5% per annum, outpacing revenue growth of 10%, while speculative building and land banking activity has declined dramatically. From an investor's perspective, the sector is still fairly cheap despite the recent rally. The average dividend yield is at over 7%, and appears sustainable as payout ratios are at 60% at present. Since the financial crisis, profits and dividend payments from home building companies have multiplied many times over. The price earnings ratio, a key valuation measure uh, for equities, is at only nine times this year's earnings forecast and expected to decline to about eight times earnings next year, a substantial discount to the wider market. Overall, the sector of mid-caps is attractive and we expect continued outperformance, also driven by earnings growth expectations of nearly 8% for next year, which is almost double of what is expected for large caps as a whole. As for UK assets in general, with a view on the upcoming election, we would be looking to hedge some of our exposure in case of an unfavorable election outcome. Thank you very much, Marco, and thank you all for listening. More podcasts on UBP's 2020 Outlook will follow in the coming days. So stay tuned.